Hi everyone, this is the hardest video I've ever done. Some of you already know from our community posts, but I know that not all of you get to see them, so I also wanted to share it here. Rancho is gone. He died on May 27th at 3.30 in the morning. It's something I never thought I'd have to say so soon. He was just a few days short of his seventh birthday. I just wanted to make this video because I think you guys deserve to know. It's already been over two months, but I wasn't able to do this earlier. You know, it's just so painful to talk about it. He was our best friend and life will never be the same without him. So I guess I should explain what happened. It's kind of a long story and for you to understand, I need to start about a year and a half ago. We had just moved into this new house. Rancho was healthy, even his digestive problems were gone. But then one night, uh, just 10 days after we moved in, uh, we were woken up in the middle of the night and found Rancho on the floor having a seizure. At the time, we didn't even know that it was a seizure. We thought he was shaking in pain or something. We honestly thought he was dying. We had no idea. He peed himself and there was blood coming out of his mouth because he'd bitten his tongue and we'd never seen a seizure before. Then he came to and after a few minutes, he was almost back to normal. A little confused, but okay. Only then did we realize that it was probably an epileptic seizure. So the day after, we had a series of tests and scans done at our vet and it all came back negative. So it was all pointing towards epilepsy or a brain tumor. And to diagnose that, we needed an MRI scan. So we decided to wait and see, since epilepsy is usually diagnosed after a second seizure. And four months later, another seizure came. So after the second seizure, we were sent for an MRI, but during the consultation at the clinic where we were sent, they basically told us that because of the breed, it was most likely idiopathic epilepsy, which means that what causes the seizures is unknown and it most likely has a genetic cause, in which case they would see nothing on the MRI anyway. And they said it could also be a brain tumor, but it was highly unlikely if it was a brain tumor. With all the medication, he would maybe live for another year. But Rancho didn't really have any other issues, and it just didn't look like a brain tumor. So after the consultation, we decided not to put Rancho through that if the most likely cause was something that they could not see on the MRI scan anyway. You know, at this point, I was uh, pretty worried what anesthesia would do to the frequency of the seizures. So again, we decided to wait. We were given some meds and we also got him some supplements. So this was March 2022. And after that, Rancho was seizure free for nine months. So we basically almost forgot about it and enjoyed life like before. We had an amazing summer vacation. We did a lot of running and bike touring again. We even started doing physical therapy because I noticed Rancho's left front leg was a bit stiff and I thought it could be because of the fracture he suffered when he was two, so. And it turned out to be true. Our physical therapist said he was overusing the other leg in order to take pressure off of the broken leg. It was just barely noticeable, but since we did a lot of running, we wanted him to stay active for as long as possible. So we did laser therapy, hydrotherapy, and some dog fitness as well. And Rancho was really enjoying that, and he was in great shape. But then one night in December, we were woken up by Rancho having another seizure. All his seizures were very violent. He always started by shaking his head you know, from side to side. So if, if he was standing up, he would hit himself on anything that was near him before he fell to the floor. And he always peed himself and lost consciousness. But this time after the seizure was over, he jumped onto our bed like he always did when he felt a little insecure. But he was still pretty restless. And, 
and we had no idea but another seizure was coming. Until that time there had always been only one. So what happened was he wanted to jump down when he felt the seizure starting, but he started falling off the bed. We managed to catch him as he was falling, but we somehow fell to the floor together. And after this one, we noticed he couldn't turn his head to the right. And he had trouble getting up when he was lying on his left side. He also had problems lying down. We thought he had pulled a muscle or just something minor during the seizure or the fall. So we just thought he'd be fine. Of course, I consulted everything with the vet and in two or three days, he was back to normal again. I actually have a video of him running in snow just a few days after the seizure. He was so full of energy and so happy. There was absolutely no sign anything was wrong with him. So we were hoping that it would take at least another nine months for another seizure to come. But unfortunately, he had another one in February. And after this one, we had to call a vet because Rancho hurt his neck again and he was in so much pain that he couldn't take a step. He didn't really fall badly or anything. It was caused by the seizure itself. He got some pain meds again, some shots, and fortunately, it got better in a few days. But after this one, the neck problems got progressively worse and several times he blocked his neck even after off-leash running in the forest. You know, he loved running so much. Uh, so we had to be much more careful. Uh, he couldn't run like he used to before and we had to keep him on a leash much more. Our vet suggested we try acupuncture for that, which we did, and I felt like it was helping. We were still taking long walks, just no more runs or a lot of off-leash time, but I was hoping it was just, you know, just temporary. The problem was that another seizure came only about a month and a half later. So the, the neck didn't really have a lot of time to heal. It was in March. This time he had two seizures again and it messed up his neck very badly again. But still the pain was manageable and he got over the worst in about three days. But the neck problems came and went. We were still doing acupuncture and I was really hoping we'd get over that. But then on May 26th at 4 a.m., we were woken up by Rancho having another seizure. This time it was milder than usual, so we thought maybe it would be okay. He did hurt his neck again. He, he couldn't look right. He was still walking okay, and he could lie down, even though there was some pain. But about an hour later, another seizure came, and this one was really violent, and we just knew it wasn't good. Now, when he came to, he was already whining. He was lying on his right side, but it was so painful. He had to roll over and stand up and, you know, it just wasn't good. He was in a lot of pain. So, of course, we had to call a vet and he came and gave him some pain medication, but it didn't really work the way it was supposed to. Later, we gave him some more pain meds since the pain got worse, but it wasn't really helping much. I don't want to go into too much detail about what happened that day, but he was in so much pain the whole day. But the worst thing about it was that he couldn't lie down. The pain just didn't allow him to lie down. He could only sit and stand. Uh, he didn't want to walk, and he was just standing there in pain. And every time he tried to lie down, it hurt so much that he had to stand up. And it, this got worse during the day, you know. So in the morning, he was still able to lie down with all the pain meds. So when we went to bed in the evening, he was beyond exhausted. It was so hard to watch. You know, he tried to lie down so many times, but he just couldn't. So at this point, it was probably some herniated discs. We thought our only chance was surgery, or spine surgery. But since his seizures were so violent, we knew that every other seizure would mess it up again. And it would only mean more suffering for him. And, and we just didn't want him to suffer anymore. You know, he was our everything. And 
we we were also quite worried that he could have another seizure, you know, from the lack of sleep. And if that happened, he would die in extreme pain. And we were really afraid of that. So, so we decided to let him go. And before we were able to find a vet who was available in the middle of the night, we talked to a few of them on the phone and they all said it was probably the best decision. Uh, so at 3 a.m. an emergency vet arrived and set Rancho free. Rancho even welcomed them with a wagging tail. It was heartbreaking. Our vet, who was on vacation when all this happened, when she heard all this, she said she talked to a neurologist and it could have been a spine canal tumor that was causing both the seizures and the extreme back pain. I guess we'll never know. In the end, we didn't do the MRI, but it wouldn't have made much of a difference anyway. Maybe just that we would have known about it and been more stressed. You know, this way we had no idea what was going to happen. You know, just the day before, Rancho was his happy, crazy self. And apart from having to be careful about the neck, we enjoyed life to the fullest. Yeah, so now he's finally free. Free from all the pain and suffering. He loved life so much. He just loved everyone. You know, our neighbors, children, other dogs. He was almost like a golden retriever at times. And he was just such a joy in our lives. And every day we were happy and grateful for him. We just couldn't watch him suffer any longer. He was so young and I wish he could still be here with us, but healthy. No, he didn't deserve all the suffering. And the only thing that gives us a bit of comfort right now is that hopefully he had a good life with us. We made so many beautiful memories. And that's what we want to remember. You know, our happy, crazy boy. And the, the situation is even sadder because we're expecting twins now. And we were so looking forward to Rancho meeting them. He would have loved them so much. Now we can only hope that he'll be watching over all of us. We asked him to send us another dog when the right time comes. But until then, we probably won't be publishing much on this channel. Maybe some memories here and there. You know, when we were choosing Rancho, we knew that epilepsy was one of the diseases that turfs could have, but we checked his ancestors and none of them had it, so we thought it was okay. Rancho's mother had four litters in her life and none of the dogs has epilepsy. I did some digging in our database of Belgian Shepherds and I did find maybe five very distant cousins who had epilepsy. So there's a possibility that Rancho was one of those unlucky dogs because, you know, the way it's inherited is still poorly understood. And we'll never know if it was idiopathic epilepsy or a tumor. But either way, I would just like to urge all breeders to be transparent about epilepsy and, and never sweep it under the carpet. It's the only way other breeders can avoid risky combinations of dogs. In my opinion, it's one of the worst diseases since you never know when a seizure is coming and you're under constant stress. And you know, all the suffering the dog and their owners have to go through is unimaginable. I know there are many dogs that can live a full life even with epilepsy, but Rancho's seizures were just so violent that he couldn't. All his seizures came during the night, so every night, every little movement or jerk woke us up, because if it were a seizure, we had to be ready to help. But at least during the day, we were a little bit calmer because it never happened during the day. When Rancho died, I felt such a relief knowing that he wasn't gonna have another seizure and he was no longer in pain. But the emptiness that came after that has been extremely hard. I just wanna thank you all for all your support throughout the years. We really, really appreciate it. I'm glad we got to share Rancho's life with you all. And if you've ever lost your dog, please let us know how you dealt with the loss. And thank you for being here for us.